Welcome home. I am so glad you decided to join us today for Church at Home, and I would love to extend a special welcome to anyone new to the family. Today we are going to be talking about how God promises to guide us, and if you would like to learn more or just let us know that you are here, text HELLOCORE to 474747 and we will get in touch with you. And if this is helpful to you, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons and ring the bell for notifications. Also, please go to our website, ionanetwork.org, where you can sign up for free devotionals, books, and so much more. We are a church that seeks to transform lives with the resurrected power of Jesus, and there are a lot of great things happening, but we'll come back to them at the end. Right now, let's gather together for a time of praise and worship.
welcome to our house for Church at Home. My name is Anna, and I'm one of the leaders here at Church at Home. Greg and I are so excited that you're joining us today. My mother-in-law and I were speaking this week about how long October feels right now. It's the month that's never going to end. I don't know if you feel that, but I know my heart feels that a little bit, and I could use a lift today, a reminder of God's good promises, some good hope in the midst of the challenges. Our hope is that this next 30 minutes will provide you with a place of hope. Join us on this new sermon series about God's promises. So set down the things that beep, chirp, or buzz at you, take a deep breath, and release the stress and craziness you've been holding in. Gather friends or family around you, or contact someone over the phone and watch with them. Let the words, music, and prayers encourage and strengthen your soul as we have church at home together. We begin with the words Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. A framework for Christians through the ages and cultures have been our creeds. They give us a basis for what we believe. Please join me in reciting this creed known as the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and, and the, the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us, especially if this is your first time. Shoot us a text to 474747 with the word Hello Core and let us know you're here. When you do that, a form will come back to you with a place to ask any questions. If there are any words that you don't understand, any questions about ideas that you hear, please write them and send them to us. We would love to find some time to talk more deeply about what you hear. Now we're going to listen to Pastor Ron talk about God's guidance in our lives. Listen with me. Well, welcome back, Ron. We're so glad to have you and uh, glad that we get to be studying something that's so important, yes. God's promises to us. Yes. And so what passage are we looking at today? So we'll be looking at James chapter 1, okay. verses 1 through 12. Yeah. And uh, the promise that I'm going to be speaking about today is going to be that was, will God guide you? And does God guide you? And how does God guide you? Yeah. But I need to tell you, the promise is God will guide you, Greg. That's awesome. And for those of you that are out there, um, I really want you to know this, that God will guide you. Uh, and so I'm going to ask a question at the very beginning of this to kind of just ask you uh, where you're looking for guidance. And that is... Will you look beyond the horizon for guidance? Um, I tend to think that lots of times in today's world, we're just not looking high enough for guidance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that's very dangerous. Yeah. So will you look beyond the horizon for guidance? Yeah. Can you read that passage for us? Absolutely. Thanks. Sure. James chapter one, beginning of verse one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, 
its flower falls and its beauty perishes, so also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Thanks, Greg. I, I want to let you guys know out there that Greg is reading from the ESV version, which um, is kind of what we do in church and those kind of things. Um, I find it to be very helpful. Um, I use the NIV version, and the idea is, is when you're looking for wisdom, which is on the pages here, um, you got to have something that you can really get into and read. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're kind of trying to figure that out, we can give you a link to um, how to choose a Bible, for instance, so that you can, you can get um, wisdom from something that you understand and that is written in a language in a way that is good for you. Yeah. And so um, my wife and I have been um, binge watching um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, nice. Uh, over the past couple months. And, yeah. and sometimes it's one, and sometimes it's three, and sometimes it's none. So, it's so are, they on, are they on Earth right now? Are they in a different dimension? We really are not sure which dimension they're in. Okay. <laughs> and that's the thing. But, you know, when you look at the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you look mm -hmm. at these Marvel Comics people, they're all given a special gift mm. Um, that they have to grow into yeah. in order to use, learn to use that gift right. in order to perform what they're supposed to do in each episode. But for us as Christians, we're given this amazing gift um, from God uh, in our baptism, and that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is given to us and gives us special abilities and special um, intuition mm -hmm. uh, that is beyond um, the horizon. And so when we begin to think about that and look at that, um, what I would challenge you and, and you and me is to always trust that God has given you that special ability, that special intuition to look to Him for wisdom. And so the Holy Spirit is a person. It's the person of the Trinity. You've yeah. got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are, they are three persons of the Trinity that are all in relationship with one another. And we are given that aspect of God to live within us yeah. to give us guidance. So, so contrast that to me. Um, you said he's a person, but um, in the Marvel universe, right. um, a gift is um, given that's innate to the person. Mm -hmm. It's as if they discover something about who they are, mm -hmm. which seems a little different than what you're talking about with the Holy Spirit being a person right. that is gifted. Can you help me understand that a little? Um, maybe. Let's give Fair that enough. a shot. I think that, that we are created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the standard. Right. Um, and we have to learn to live in His image, but yet we're fallen, we're broken, mm -hmm. um, and therefore we um, move out of that image. The Holy Spirit that's given to us brings us back into the image mm -hmm. and into that relationship. And, and it is a gift, and it's something we have to learn to trust. Yeah. And I think that's really what I'm trying to mean with the Marvel comic thing. They have to learn to trust the gift. Right. Right. Trust the identity that's been given them. And we have to learn to trust that identity. Does that help you? I, I think so. But I think what's really interesting is um, it, the key is the pronoun, right? They're trusting the gift it. Right. We're trusting the gift him. Got it. Which means that we're, we're not alone. So right. if you think about the previous promises um, that God would be with us right. um, next week, God will protect us. It isn't that um, we're given to move metaphors like Star Wars, right. Metaclorans, where right. we become the best version of humanity that right. we can no. be. No, 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 no. It's that we have God himself with us, right. his own presence, right. 
that is walking hand in hand with us. And abiding with and hanging into and with. And this is really the process we called sanctification. Mm -hmm. And that is the, yeah. the process that we go through, uh, the act of making something holy. And, and, and I hate to break it to you, we're not going to be holy. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit leans us towards holiness. Right. And that whole process is waiting and learning to trust mm -hmm. that we are, we are being refined. We're being molded and shaped um, into something that we weren't were we weren't before Christ jumped in. Yeah, absolutely. And so this whole process is um, um, to become set aside. Um, we're 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 different as Christians. Uh, I don't know if you notice that we're we're slightly different. We're looking beyond the horizon rather than uh, below the horizon for for help and yeah. for identity. And so sanctification is a process of moving forward with God, mm -hmm. um, who is a leader, and trusting Him in all that process. Um, we have a, a guy that um, just recently graduated from seminary and just a fun fella. And uh, Chip Aitzen says this, and I'm going to paraphrase it. It's um, that we're all traveling along, along the road mm -hmm. uh, to this holiness and trusting in the Lord and, and understanding how much He will guide us. Um, the reality is many of us have stopped um, in the, the, the side rest stop. Yeah. And we're in that rest stop. And many of us need to get back on the road. Yeah. Um, there are really no rest stops in the process of sanctification. Mm. Um, and we've got to get back on the road. The reality is many of you, many of us, have stopped on the rest stop. And some of us have pulled over and taken a nap, quite honestly. Yeah. And it's time to get back on the road and realize that God will guide you. So be in process with Him uh, on the road as we move down that road. Yeah, that's good. That's I, good. I think that's really helpful. Um, so get on the playing field, get back on the road. Um, we are created um, as children of God, and the Holy Spirit comes into us and begins to move in a mighty and powerful way, and it's learning to trust that He will guide. Um, and in that, um, we need to know that, that really that guidance comes from the book here, and, and this is where we learn how to listen to the Lord. And I need mm -hmm. to say, sometimes I'm reading the book and I'm not necessarily getting it, mm -hmm. but there's something that, that just kind of jumps into me yep. in almost a subconscious way yeah. from the book that will inform mm -hmm. my decision making and provide wisdom for me later. Um, so the Holy Spirit desires to speak to us directly, really does. And it's through the word and it's through prayer and hanging out. Um, we have another uh, book that we use um, called the Book of Common Prayer, which kind of leads us in our worship and in our daily worship and in our lifetime worship. And so this book just provides me the ability to, to, to learn to be able to hear the Lord. Yeah. And so I'm going to be pulling a, a, a prayer out of here a little bit later. But it's something that I read probably 35, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. but just continues to come back. Absolutely. Like these words from the scriptures, they just come to, they tend to come back to us yeah. um, to speak directly in our lives. God wants to direct us. He really does. Um, so what I want to talk a little bit is I want to move now towards a passage that you just read. And it does, uh, it's verse 2, mm -hmm. and it talks about patience. And it says this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, that whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Mm -hmm. Let perseverance finish its work. Don't you like that? Finish its work. Oh, my goodness. So that you may be mature and competent in lacking um, anything, not lacking anything. The idea of this, this perseverance, this, this thing that goes on, it is active engagement. Yeah. This patience, this perseverance that goes on, it's active engagement. It's not the kind of 
perseverance of sitting in the waiting room for a doctor's appointment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and going, oh my gosh, when's it going to happen? When it's going to happen? Just kind of waiting back and sitting. Yeah. It's the kind of perseverance of patience that spurns you on in the middle of a marathon. I've not writ, driven or uh, ran a marathon, and I'm probably not going to. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait time out. Okay. But how many, how many miles have you ridden in this past week on your bike? Not a lot this week. Last week, almost 150. So. 150. Okay. So in one bike ride, you might ride 60 miles? Right. Yeah. Where along that route does perseverance begin to take place? Well, on Saturday, it was mile 16. Yeah. Uh, the headwind was horrible. It was just, I was, it was, we were miserable. I was yeah. miserable. And I really thought about turning around at like 40. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> 8, 16, and then 40. Right. So what happened between 16 and 40? You just keep going. Okay. You know there's glory somewhere in there. Yep, absolutely. And so it's that active engagement. It's one more mile. It's one more moment. It's one more struggle. It's one more day Yeah. Uh, in our life that you just kind of persevere and you move on. Um, it's the ability to abide and be steady in the midst of when you really want to quit. Yeah, right. Yeah. You just want to quit sometimes. But this perseverance says that we'll consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, that whenever you face trials, and that was headwind, that was whatever, but we face trials every single second of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Financial, stress, strain. What are we going to do next in our life? What, what am I doing right now in my life? Yeah. Um, it's that... Um, car accident that you might get into it's just a little fender bender that literally how do i persevere through this what am i going to do next right and it's just kind of moving along um, in that it's a frame of mind which produces endurance so what you're saying is that um my temptation towards a temper tantrum not externally but internally oh yeah why, 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 why? yeah is not necessarily good as what this is talking about. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because when, when you get ready to have that temper tantrum, it's like the warning light on your dashboard that, that, that says, meh, meh, meh. Yeah. You either look at that and pull over, or you drive on and um, cause major problems. Yeah. Yeah. With your car or whatever life. Well, and that's your, your main point, right? You can either look horizontally or you can look vertically. Right. And the answers aren't horizontal. They're not. They're, and so the, the warning light is actually a good thing. The, the feeling of a temper tantrum coming on is actually a good thing as long as it drives you to that vertical Pause answer. Pause and look up. Mm -hmm. Pause and look up. Endure, because this, this, this thing that's going on inside of us, this volcano that wants to go off, yeah. is not going to produce goodness. Absolutely. Um, it's going to take you down and others down. So how do we look forward and upward to that sense of peace and patience and gentle endurance that goes on? And you know, parents, I need to be real honest with you. Um, let your children fail. Yes. Let them fail mm -hmm. and let them fail beautifully, safely, because that, pa that failure will have us turn back to trust in the Lord over and over and over again. Yeah. So count it all joy. All these things that are going on, they are joy. They produce patience. They produce that. Um, I told you about a prayer that I was going to read in this book. I'm not going to read the whole thing. This is the um, Anglican Book of Common Prayer. Um, it was published last year, yep. um, but it's it's got thousands of years of, of yeah. development. And on page 861, there's a phrase there that says, we thank you also, we thank God also, for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence upon God alone. Mm -hmm. I've held on to that for so many, many, many years. You know, it's those failures that, that teach us to not look below the horizon, but look above to that's where our dependence comes from. Because we know 
that God will guide. He will guide. And so below the horizon is not long-term guidance. <laughs> Above the horizon is that long-term abiding guidance that is within us and in this book that is going to sustain over a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. So parents, you got to let your kids fail. And, and, and when you fail, take a look at how the Lord might be molding and shaping you in that failure or even in that success. Mm. So we're going to take a look at another point, and this is um, verse 7, um, and it talks about wisdom. And I don't know where you look for wisdom um, or where you guys look for wisdom, but I've got to look above that horizon for that wisdom. And I, that revelation comes through this book. And so it says this in verse 7, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. He's not going to judge you if you're asking for help. The greatest prayer in all the world is a four-letter word that says help. Yeah. It's, it, it says help. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking for help, you're looking beyond and you're looking to God for that help. And it will be given, wisdom will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Mm -hmm. Trust that that which God is going to give has value. Yeah. One of, one of the commentators said, um, don't go looking for a second opinion. And how often do we go looking for a second opinion? Right. We want yeah. authentication from somewhere else. We'll shop the best answer Yeah. when the best answer was probably provided on the first shot. Absolutely. And, and when, we're, when we're asking for help from the Lord, who will guide? You have to trust that. Yeah. He's going to lead you into good and glorious places. It may not be instantaneous, right? but he will lead you and he will guide you. And so that is a sense of if anyone lacks wisdom, it's necessarily we seek the Lord for that wisdom. Mm -hmm. In trials, we need wisdom. And during this COVID time, I know we, it's been trial. It's been a trial. Yeah. And to seek that wisdom from above rather than horizontal or below the hor hor horizon, it's, it's golden. Yeah. Because it gives us a sense of peace. It's, it's something that's long lasting wisdom. Mm -hmm. And wisdom is something that is long lasting wisdom. And so the person who does not have wisdom in scripture and in life, and you know it well, um, is a fool. Right is a fool. Someone who lacks that wisdom is a fool. So go to God first and trust that, not necessarily yourself or others. Now, there used to be a hilarious um, show on TV many years ago, and all of y'all are way too young for this, but it was called The A-Team. And um, there was a, a, a fellow on there called Mr. T, and he had all those all that gold chain. And so um, he would constantly say, I pity the fool. Yeah. And, and I know that the Lord looks at me sometimes when I'm, when I'm looking below the horizon for help mm -hmm. and wisdom. He just looks at you and goes, I pity you, fool. Yeah. Look above. Look above where things are um, coming down at you and to you for goodness, glory, and greatness. And be in tune with that. Um, when I was in seminary, we had a professor that said, you need to always put on your theological antenna. Mm -hmm. and, and so we came to class the next day, and all of us had those little dealy balls that were on top of our heads yeah, yeah. to say literally, okay, we get it. We get it. We need to have our antenna out. We need to have our... Um, awareness out beyond ourselves that we are actually going to hear from the Lord. Right. Yeah. It, it, there's a, it's that expectation. Mm -hmm. And it, it really boils down to one simple question. God, what are you doing in this situation? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's theological and uh, antenna. It's theological reflection. Theology just means the study of God. And 
life gives us lots of opportunities to study what God is up to. Absolutely. Um, but we have to be aware yep. of where we're looking. Right. Um, all too often, I know in our culture today and in my own life, my tendency, our tendency is just not go deep enough. Right. Right. There's always more. Yeah. There's always more. Mm -hmm. And God is constantly doing that. Psalm um, 32, uh, verses 8 and 9 says this. I will, and Psalms are a, a book in the Bible, the very smack dab middle of the Bible. Um, they're, they're hymns, they're, they're songs, if you will, of instruction. And so it says this. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I, God, will counsel you with my eye upon you. Think about that. Mm -hmm. God's going to give his guidance to us, but he's, he's, he's putting his eye on us so that he can watch us use it. And don't you think that's a delight for the Lord when, when yeah. he watches us use the guidance that he wow. gives? Absolutely. And I need to say this as a pastor, it is so much fun um, also. And, and those of you that are, just, that are believers... It's so much fun to watch others use God's guidance and find out that, yes, he is consistent and he is good and he means well and all that. And so I want to challenge you that, that as you're out there, um, really take time to cultivate that desire to hear from the Lord and to be guided by the Lord. And that cultivation for me is, is so many ways. I'm listening to praise songs. I'm listening to this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm literally watching the news. Mm. This sounds crazy. But I'm balancing what's going on in the news of what God is trying to reveal and where the truth is in it all. Yeah. Um, watching um, humanity and watching it all unfold in front of me and say, okay, Where's God guiding this? And where are we rebelling? Yeah. And that rebelling is, is so evident. And that rebelling says, okay, we need a Savior that's going to come in and, and, and rescue us, um, pull us out of the ditch, pull us into a place of still waters, pull us into a place of, of joy. Yeah. And that is what Christ does as He comes to the cross and he dies for us. He says, okay, I got it. You, you've gone off the road. You're sitting in the middle of the, the rest area. And you have maybe abandoned my goals and me. And I forgive you and I'll bring you back onto the road of sanctification. Uh, we're back on the road to listening. Back on the road to listening to the promises of God that I will guide you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as we're marching along with this a um, couple questions for you as we move out of this and into some time of prayer um, do you and I look beyond the horizon mm. and how fast will it take you to cultivate and listen to the Lord who's guiding you that you need to look beyond the horizon when you're only looking below yeah. and and that's a curating that's that's a growing mm. of the heart that we are learning to look beyond yeah. and 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 to read and uh, to listen and to pray and to hang out with others because I mean just hanging out with you uh, over the past year or so has been fun. It has helped to curate my heart mm. in relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. And we do that in core groups. We do that in so many ways. So as we part, where are you gaining guidance? And are you looking unto the Lord who will, he promises, I will provide you wisdom. Are we listening? Are we paying attention? What's going on? 
Thank you, Ron. Today, we want you to know that you're not alone in the world. If you're looking for guidance or direction, God is near and wants to be your guide in life. One way he does that is through providing the church, his body to help each other. If you feel lost, confused, don't know which way to turn, please reach out to us on the contact form on the website. I'd love to meet with you personally uh, for coffee or to chat over Zoom, whatever's most comfortable for you. When we feel those lost, confused, alone moments, we often turn to things or people that are not God's best for us. Take a few moments to think and confess where you've turned this week to other things to fill you beside God. Tell Him of your feelings and need for guidance. Let's take a few moments of silence right now and tell those things to God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty, Almighty God, God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. Remake us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter, we ask, we ask this through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Strengthen your life in his kingdom and keep you upright to the last day through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Amen. As we confess our sins to God, I want you to know that God loves you and meets you no matter how far away you feel from him today with words not of condemnation, but of welcome. Listen to these welcoming words of Jesus. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Those words remind us that God does not leave us alone, but has good plans for our lives, the most important one being salvation through His Son. And in that spirit, we can turn and offer peace to each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As we say the word peace, we realize that the world is greatly lacking in peace right now. We hear of bad news everywhere. Our hearts are heavy until we remember that we can run to a God who is bigger than all of this. We can turn to him in prayer and he both listens and answers our prayers. So join us today as we pray through the prayers of the people. Father, we pray that you would lead the nations of the world in the ways of peace. Guide their leaders in wisdom and truth for the safety and good of all. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would be with us as we get ever closer to an election, that you would provide um, wisdom and guidance to your people. There are just challenges all over the place and we need your wisdom. Together, Father, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pour out on your whole church the spirit of unity and truth. May all who confess your holy name agree in the truth of your word, live in loving unity, and serve you with holy and righteous lives. God, we do pray for the church around the world. We pray that you would strengthen believers everywhere strengthen them to love their neighbors, to reach out, to take their fears to you and in place be replaced with faith and love. Lord, we pray for healing for those that are sick. We pray for strength for the doctors and nurses that are seeing an increase in COVID and are needing to work hard. Mm. Lord, we just pray that you would strengthen them and allow them the, the endurance to continue. And Lord, we pray for the church that she would be a witness in this world. Together, Father, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Lord, comfort and sustain everyone who in this fleeting life is in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other distress. Especially we pray for our friends and family. I want to invite you to just pause here and lift up the names of those that need your prayers today. Together, Father, Father, hear hear our our prayer prayer through through Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
thousands elsewhere, thousands elsewhere. Thank you so much for joining us today. I mentioned earlier that we are a community that seeks to transform lives with the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. And as we close, I would like to share a few ways that we have seen God move in this past week, as well as some great ways to connect into our family. If you are interested in connecting with us in any of these ways or learning more, please text HELLOCORE to 474747 and we will connect with you. Our core groups are continuing to grow and reach many different people in different ways. These groups really try to dive deep together, and we would love to find the right group for you. Thank you so much for taking this time to join us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.